I'm not trying to bash on Arteza, especially since they gave this to me for free. I'm just trying to honestly analyze, uh, give some constructive feedback if anybody from Arteza is watching this. So I've got my sketchbook out, and I've also got this set of 48 fine liner pens from Arteza. Arteza, Arteza, not sure how to say it, except I'm pretty sure I saw a video on their website where somebody said Arteza, so that's what I'm going to go with, Arteza. And I should start this video by telling you uh, that I didn't pay for these. Uh, you need to know, just full disclosure, the Arteza company, somebody from their uh, marketing department emailed me uh, about a week ago and said, uh, hey, we like what you're doing on your YouTube channel and we think that our products would uh, work well for your viewers. Uh, so they said, hey, um, we'll send you some stuff, you review it, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So they sent me this for free. I have not paid for this, uh, but I'm going to give an honest review. They also sent me two other things. They sent me some colored pencils and some gel pens. I'll get to those in future videos. But today, we're focusing on this 48 set of Fine Liner Pens Premium, it says. Premium. Me from the future here. It's been about two months. I have had these Arteza pens sitting next to my computer for about two months now. And I, before I get back to the footage I recorded two months ago when I first got these, I just want to say some positive things before I tear them apart. So, uh, the triangle shape of the, uh, the, the handles on those pens, nice and comfortable grip. The plastic that they're made out of, as, you know, the texture of that, it's got a nice comfortable grip. Uh, the ink is nice and smooth, makes good, clear, clean lines, and uh, they, they last a good long time. They, they don't run out very quickly. Uh, my wife and I have used them for grocery lists and uh, crossword puzzles, as well as doodling and drawing and stuff. But, yeah, color, oh my gosh, really, Arteza, come on back to me two months ago. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Welcome back to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces today. So the first thing I want to check is color. How do these colors work? Do they match the caps? Uh, are they nice, vivid, vibrant colors? Are they weak? Are they pigmented? Let's get started on that. And uh, first things first, out of the first five pens that I just tried, this one is uh, way, way darker than expected. Let's keep going and uh, let's just make some swatches and see how these colors compare to the colors of the caps. What happens if you, oh, oh. Oh. Okay. Well, where I was like trying to color with it, it this must be a sharper nib than I expected because it's like pulling bits of paper up. So no more coloring, just lines. Maybe some cross hatching. Okay. Um. Well. It's still a little darker than the color of the, the cap, but you know, you'd expect that. A little bit darker. That's significantly darker. Like this cap is kind of a neon orange, but that's just like an orange orange. Okay. That's a bright, vivid yellow, but it makes a booger green color. Really? Really? I don't mind having a color in my tray that's a booger green color. 
But if it's gonna look booger green, then the cap should look booger green. Would you expect that kind of dark peachy color to come from this dandelion yellow? <sighs> Maybe I'd expect it to come from this one, but it didn't. It came from that one. Let's see what color this does. Okay, wait, wait. Hold the phone. That made a brighter yellow. It's a darker cap than that one. Now, I just want to, you know, verify here that I'm not like putting this on the wrong thing. You see that that matches the back. And and this is this nice lemon yellow color. That yellow is lighter than the yellow that this made, but this pen has a lighter, and I'm just gonna verify, you know, that that's, yeah, that's on the right, the right thing. Okay. Guys, uh, if you've got two yellows, there's just, just forget everything else for a moment. If you've got two yellows, one of them has a light cap. The other one has still a light cap, but darker than this one. Which one of these pens would you expect to have a lighter colored ink? Well, you'd expect that this lighter colored pen cap would produce a lighter colored ink, but it doesn't. That's problematic to me. Now, I just want to show something real quick. Get all this out of the way. Let's talk about Copic markers real quick. This is my Copic color chart showing the colors of Copic. These are like the most expensive premium quality markers you can get, period. If there's anything that the word premium describes, it's Copic markers. I'm just gonna use this as an example real quick. There's the Y19, and there's the Y19. And you see they're virtually the same color, right? Grab another random color. What do I have here? The E13. Uh, da, da, da. The E13 and the cap. They're almost exactly the same. You know, this is what you expect from premium markers. Now here's another one, that's the RO2, and that's the RO2. Now those aren't exactly the same. The marker cap looks a little darker than the ink. You know, sometimes, because the ink and whatever resin they use to make these uh, little things, because they're different substances, they definitely get different, uh, you know, different pigments. Um, and, you know, also like the variation on how much ink you put on the paper, that makes a difference. But the important thing is Copic gives you a color chart and each marker has right there on the tip, it tells you what the color is. So guys, when I color with my Copic markers, these premium art supplies that you pay a ton of money for, when I, when I color with these, I don't look at the tip of the marker to see what color I'm getting. I look at my color chart. I say, hmm, well, what color do I need? Maybe I need a blue. Okay, which blue? Which one of those blues do I need? And then I look, oh, it's a BO6. All right, let me go grab my BO6. That's how I choose my colors when I uh, draw and color with Copics. But guess what these Arteza pens don't have? They don't have any words anywhere on them. This Copic marker, it tells you here, R27. It tells you on this cap, R27. It tells you on the other cap, R27. This marker tells me in three places, here, here, and here. It tells me in three places what that color is called. 
then it also corresponds to this chart. So even if the cap doesn't look like the color of the ink, I can figure it out. But with these Arteza pens, I can't figure it out. I would be okay if a few of the pens didn't match with the color of the top of the pen to the color that it makes on a paper. I would be okay with that if, if A, it was just one or two of them or just a few, three out of 10, 30%, really, that's a lot. Um, a lot that don't match. Uh, but the other thing that I would have to have in order to make it usable as an artist, I would have to have a color chart, but these don't even have any label telling you what color they are. This just says Arteza Fine Liner 0.4. They all say the same thing. There's no name of the color or anything like that. So, I guess I could grab a Sharpie and write on each one of these markers, lemon yellow, buttercup yellow. But that's taking my time. If I'm paying $60 for a set of pens, no, guess what? I'm not paying $60 for a set of pens. Let's go back and look at that website again. It says $59.99 with a line through it. And then beside that, it's less than $20. Guys, Arteza, I've just got to say, I mean, I've only been through 10 of these pens so far. And I know you guys gave them to me for free. If there's anybody from Arteza watching, take this as constructive criticism. I'm not trying to tell you you have a bad product. As a matter of fact, so far, just after using 10 of these, I think they're great. What I don't think, I don't think they're premium. I don't, I don't believe you. Um, I'm gonna go through the rest of these pens. I've gone through 10, I've got 38 more to go. I'm gonna set aside any pens that I don't think uh, match the color of the cap. And we'll count and we'll see how many of these pens would realistically be usable if all I'm doing is opening up this, this tray of pens, just looking for a color, grabbing the color. All right, so here I'm actually going back and starting over and just retrying everything. Um, I'm gonna come back and analyze those two again in just a second. This one is pretty perfect. This one is pretty perfect. These three are pretty perfect. All of those I'm good with. These two, let's try larger scale. That's that one. That's that one. They are almost identical in the color of ink that they make, and they are also almost identical in the color of the cap but I think the caps should be switched. 
because this one is a yellower green and this one is a greener green and that one is a yellower green ink and that one is a greener green ink. So these two, maybe, you know, even though the, the caps won't match the back, eh, eh, maybe I'll just switch the caps. This one is a greener green, but it's the yellower green pen. This one is a yellower green, even though it's got a greener green. I mean, are you guys seeing the same thing I'm seeing? If you think I'm crazy, leave a comment. If you think I'm right, leave a comment. Tell me in the comment section, do you think I'm insane about these green pens? So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna call these two a maybe. I'm just gonna put the wrong caps back on. This one, really? Look how dark that ink is. Look how light the cap is. You know, like these two? That one's darker, but it's a lighter. I don't, you know, I'm done. All right, guys. So just after testing the colors, not really looking at anything else yet, all I've done is make little swatches of the colors. I found that 12 of them, um, 10 of them were just not at all the color that you needed, you would expect if you're looking in the tray. Two of them, I was able to just swip, swap the lids um, so 10 to 12 of them out of a 48 set weren't, weren't really usable. Hey guys, so it's a new day. I have uh, been doodling with these, um, you know, with these pens a little bit more. I, I, I've been having some fun with them. Um, they're a bunch of fun, but I just, I, I had to, I had to repeat something that somebody else said because I was sitting at the library at a table at the, the public library here and uh, I was using I was using these pens I had taken out you guys saw earlier in the video I had taken like 13 12 or 13 of them out of this box and still I had a, I had a student one of, one of my kids came and sat at the table with me she picked some of these up even though I had taken out the ones that I thought were just too far off from the color to be usable. First one she picked up, her favorite color is teal. She picked up a teal color and immediately she, she touched it to the paper and she just said, I thought I was gonna like that one, but I didn't. So let me just, just say one more time. This has the word premium on there for a reason. Arteza, you're trying to sell this as a premium set? Don't. On your website, take off the little $59.99 with a line through it. Just let it be a $20 set. Um, if you just told me that this was a $20 set of, of 48 fine liner pens, then I would have expected everything I got. I would have expected 10 of them to not have the, the color that matched the cap. I would have expected for, you know, the flimsy plastic trays. Uh, I would have expected uh, that they don't have any naming of the colors. It just gives you the brand name and the size and doesn't tell you the name of the color. I would have expected all of that from a $20 set. If you just say it's a $20 set, no word premium there or anything, just 48 fine liner pens, then I would have gotten what I expected and I'd be happy with it. But just, just after testing out those colors, uh, 
let's let's put let's put it this way. If I walk into an art store to buy a set of colored pens, and I walk in there thinking I have a budget of fifty to hundred dollars, and I want to buy a professional set of drawing pens so that you know I can make professional level artwork to sell to display uh, for whatever reason professional illustrations um, you know whether I'm doodling comic books uh, doodling designs uh, for whatever if I go in with a budget of 50 to hundred dollars which is the range that you're telling us this is worth you're telling us it's a $60 set if I saw that and I, and I said, oh, it's a premium set for $60, great. And then I buy it and I bring it home and I start working with it or I take it to the office and I start working with it or I take it to the studio and I start working with it. And I find that a fourth of my colors aren't accurate to what I need them to be and I don't have any easy mechanism for for labeling them and naming them and figuring out which one's which I would I would want my money back however on the other hand if I'm a student or if I'm just a hobbyist just going to purchase some colorful pens for fun because I like to doodle and I like to make little, uh, you know, little drawings, little doodles, little zentangles, little whatevers, and I just want to have some color with it. Then I, I'd, I'd be happy with this just like I'd be happy with any other twenty-dollar set of forty-eight pens. I would expect that some of the colors are going to be off. I would expect that it's going to be in you know a flimsy tray i would expect that it's not going to tell me any names of colors and that it's just going to be a you know usable product feels good makes nice lines the the lines are you know solid they're clean they're crisp um it's not like a dollar store set where you would expect the ink to run out in five seconds it's not like a dollar store set where you'd expect inconsistency with your lines and uh, low pigment count. Um, they look nice. They work nicely. But I don't believe you when you're trying to tell me it's a premium set. And I don't believe you when you tell me it's worth $60. If it was, if it was in the store for $60 and I bought it for $60, I would have returned it. Don't. Don't try to tell us it's something it's not. Just, just from me to you. If you want to push the game and make it a premium set, if you really want to price it at 60, even $100, you could, 120, you could double your actual, you know, not sale price and actually sell it at, you know, $100, $120. If you just fix a couple of things. Three things you have to do. Thing number one, fix the cap issue where there's somewhere a lighter colored cap has darker ink and then the darker colored cap has lighter ink. Fix that issue. Um, and also with that fixing, like this, this bright yellow cap that looks booger green on the page, that's fine if it's gonna be booger green, but make the cap look booger green, you know? make these caps look like the color that they are. The second thing is name your colors. Make up a name. I don't care, you know, black is black, but if you've got to make up a name for the different grays, if you've got to make up a name for the different browns, if you've got to make up a name for the different purples, I don't care if you call it peacock gray or whatever, you know, whatever. But have a name for it and a system like, just take, take, a memo from brand that makes professional art supplies. If you make a system for the artist, that goes a long way to alleviating the concern 
of uh, a cap not matching the color that's inside. The third thing you gotta do is fix this flimsy tray situation. Your, your outside box, your exterior box here with the hinge, this is a nice tray. It, you know, it's, it's got a little bit of flimsiness to it, but that's what you expect from a metal tray. It's, it, but it's mostly solid. But then, what's up with these plastic trays inside? The outer box is great, this not so much. But that's only if you're really trying to make it a premium set. It doesn't really feel like that's what you're going for. Arteza, take that word premium off of the box. It's good, you don't need that word. And if I just see this and, and, and see that it's $20 or less and I buy it, I'll be happy. I would have been thrilled to pay $20 for this set. This is a great set for 20 bucks. But I would recommend this set to any hobbyist, to any uh, just doodler. Yeah, $20. There's a link in the description, go get it. But if they take off the sale and, they, and it's $60, don't pay $60 for it. But if you're a professional artist, and you need a professional set of inking pens, this ain't it. I'm not trying to bash on Arteza, especially since they gave this to me for free. I'm just trying to honestly analyze, uh, give some constructive feedback. If anybody from Arteza is watching this, 